What is up everybody? This is Marshall Lee of DonkeyJobProjects.com and this is the Working Artist Vlog. How are you guys doing? Um, <clears throat> so today um, I wanted to talk about a new project, yet yeah, another new project. Um, still working on Big Wrath. Uh, still working on pro a project that I can't disclose at the moment. Um, you know, but those have no deadlines, um, at, le at least not as of yet. And uh, I had an opportunity come up for an anthology. Um, there is, I've talked about, I had um, him on recently on a live stream on an early bird art cast, uh, Mr. Peter Seckler. And um, speaking of him, it's pretty cool. Um, I just got this in the mail it's been i think it's been in in my p.o box for a while but you know because of the virus i haven't you know try i'm trying to limit my my going out you know even though i work every day um and i actually have had to go out a lot because i've had to get prescriptions and stuff uh and other things um like food and whatnot <clears throat> but i'm trying to do my best <laughs> Um, but Peter Seckler created this and it's pretty cool. It's 41 pages of story and, and cut and art and stuff like that. And it's kind of hard to show you, <laughs> but, uh, you can check it out. It's on Indiegogo right now. And, uh, yeah, I'm, I've already read the first two issues cause he sent them out as mini comics. Um, is salt just, uh, Type this into Indiegogo, but I'll put a link in the description as well. Um, and I'm really excited for him to have created this. Um, you know, I'm super inspired by what he's doing um, and how much work he's done. He started in August of last year, and he's created so many comics since then. And he's created his first 41-page story. Um, kind of like a small trade paperback, I guess you would call it. It's pretty awesome. It's three, it collects three issues of Assault. Um, and that is super amazing. And he's also done a bunch of other mini comics right now. He's working on a bunch of comics and he's just knocking them out left and right. Um, he put together, um, a anthology he's actually got a few planned in the works many maybe maybe he's just going to keep doing anthologies i don't know um but he's got one that he started with one of the other uh triple a creators in the discord um the triple a discord uh the the same creator that um it works with him on the daily draw um posts and that is Sir Handsome. And so he, those two have been working on an anthology. And at some point I heard somebody talking about the anthology we're working on. And, you know, I don't catch everything in the Discord. Um, but when I heard that, I'm like, oh, what anthology is this? And then Peter chimed in and he's like, oh, you know, we're doing a superhero anthology um, and you know, anybody's open to join. And I was like, ding, <laughs> what <laughs> I can join, uh, you know, anytime there's some new shiny project I can do, it, uh, excites me as you guys, the long time watchers will know <laughs> and probably maybe to my detriment, but maybe not. I mean, I've done a lot of work here. You can see, um, life in space and that's the poster with all the characters um right here <laughs> is for the um werewolves and unicorns anthology um i've gotten a lot of things out even you know and then there's attack of the lizard brain sorry right here <laughs> Um, and there's Glyph and you know I've worked on a lot of little projects here and there and gotten a lot of cool stories out so it's it's exciting it's fun um, sometimes it doesn't go according to plan but still cool stories come out of all this like I said I don't have any hard deadline on anything or any deadline at all 
So this came up and this does have a bit of a deadline and I knew it was something I could more have fun with than anything and didn't have to get too bogged down in, um, you know, crazy character designs and stuff. Uh, so let me show you kind of where I'm at with that. So this here is a character I created uh, using Scott Circlin's, um template for creating characters, the, the male character turnaround, design, design turnaround, um, which was fun to use that. Definitely an easy way to kind of um, get started on characters and try different variations. Um, there were all kinds of variations before this came about. Um, it took me a little while to create this character, um, but you know, it didn't take me crazy long. Um, and you know, I read a lot of, um, or I check out a lot of stuff on Comic Book Plus, the pub in the public domain, and um, you know, I was just looking through superheroes. I kind of wanted him to have a little bit of an old school look, um, at the very least, a somewhat of a Bronze Age look. Um, you know, this is this is somewhere. You know, I mean, the Golden Age look would be cool, but. Some of the designs in the Golden Age are good, great. Some of them are not so great, and they're just super simple. So I, you know, I'm kind of taking inspiration from that, but I also wanted them, the character, to have kind of a distinct look as well. Um, so, and also, um, I didn't want to. I thought it would be fun to play around with a common power set instead of like trying to make up my own crazy origin story and and stuff like that. So his name is. Uh, see his name is expando <laughs> hence the x on his chest um and here's another thing okay i gotta come up with like a logo because i really do like this character already um and he's kind of a, a geeky kid in in like an urban environment and um, he thinks, he, he's not like afraid, he's very outspoken and stuff, but he gets kind of definitely razzed for it, um, you know, because he's he's a nerd, you know, he's kind of like, he's like the Napoleon Dynamite of the ghetto or something. <laughs> um, and, you know, he's he gets, uh, you know, like I said, razzed by the locals and, um, you know, he finds a way to uh, kind of move into something more powerful, kind of by accident. Um, and you know, it, it, he he seems to to fit. It's kind of like a you know a Spider-Man, like Peter Parker thing. Like he he kind of once he he dons the suit, you know, he kind of comes into his own. Um, so um, expando, as you can think of like the name expando um you know it's kind of obvious what his powers are to a certain degree it's similar to mr fantastic or um ant-man or something like that um actually the um the uh inspiration was more from ant-man than anything um i love uh doing the ant-man um or I, lo I love the Ant-Man character and um, watching like the Ant-Man movies. They're like some of my favorite movies. Uh, like I just love how the powers like go in and out from being like big to small. Um, and it just it's fun to see him like kind of be powerful when he's like a giant size but then also quickly be super powerful by being super small and, and crawling going into places other people can't go and almost hiding it's almost like being being able to be invisible and stuff like that um and so expando kind of has that power but you kind of splice it also with like mr fantastic not that he's stretchy like he's not exactly stretchy like he won't be like his arms won't be going crazy like um like rubber hose animation or anything um it's more like he just he can expand and this will sound possibly not so great but he can expand um 
like limbs, I should say. <laughs> you know, um, he can expand uh, aspects, and and I'm not trying to go there with it, where it is kind of. I'm sure some people's minds might go. <laughs> I really want to keep this a very innocent, fun um, story, and um, not meaning to go to. It's a, it's PG, you know. It's fun. It's superhero um, goofiness. So. You know, when he, sometimes he'll like touch the little thing in his chest and it'll spin. Um, I think that's kind of how he gets the suit on, actually. Um, I, I thought about the idea of like having it spin when he uses his powers, but I feel like that would be a little complicated. So, um, anyways, this is Expando. And um, something interesting that I've done here, um, and, and this is like a very simple story. It's got, it just has to be like an eight page story. Um, it's not meant to be super deep, but as you go, um, if you've ever made a comic or, or created anything right in a story, you, um, you know that things can, can get more and more complicated and more, more in depth um, as you go. So I've started working on the pages. Oh, I shouldn't show this part yet. Um, and again, I'm. Um, they have a certain um, page uh, format that they want. Um, Peter wants. Uh, it's uh, six point six three by ten point two five inches, six hundred DPI. I think they said six hundred. I put it at 600 DPI. Um, they might have said 300, but I'm start. I'm working from 600, and, and I can put it down to 300, I guess, um, after the fact. Although, will that change? That might change the size. I might have screwed myself in that. I don't know. We'll see. Um, but uh, you know, we'll see what happens. But uh, um, and I am using um, once again. Scott Circlin's page, comic page, but I reduced it down to the size um, that I needed. Um, but I still have his like trim lines and stuff in there. They may or may not be to the same exact specs as their comic, but I, I'm sure it'll work fine. Um, I'll make sure to keep you know the words well within you know where it probably should be um hopefully it works out um anyways so again being um inspired by the um old golden age comics like the first comics that were ever made uh the, that kind of timeline uh you know a lot of times they'll have like the splash kind of splash page that may or may not actually have to do with the story um, or it may have to do with the story, but it's more symbolic. Like this won't, this thing that's happening here won't actually happen in the story. Um, but it's a cool imagery, like to kind of draw readers into that story. And then a couple panels underneath to start the story off. And something interesting that I've done, and I kind of did this by accident, but um, I'm doing all the pages on the same clip studio file um, so you can see I have page one page two they're in folders page three page four this is going to be a black and white comic page five page six but I think I'm still going to probably do a color version honestly um, I might this is going to be a to be continued story so I might actually do a colored version on my own where it's just an expando comic um sometime after the fact of these anthologies being put out um so the first part of the story is going to be in this first anthology and then i think he said he's going to do another superhero anthology but he's talked about doing a fantasy anthology too so i'm actually going to play with genre with expando um so hopefully you know i'm going to actually create his character in a fantasy it, i already was having ideas of it being like an urban fantasy anyways so it's it's interesting where this is going to end up going so like i said i have those different pages so i'll click page one off there's page two rough nails <laughs> click that off page three 
click that off, page four, click that off, page five. This one actually got more into detail. This is where I kind of created the character on the page, and I'll be doing, I have to create some more characters as well. Um, but I'm already getting the comic pretty much put together um, with these quote-unquote rough nails, and the character the, the big bad monster that he's fighting in this issue is the block. You know, he lives in an urban environment and the block is like the bad guy here today. Um, and as you can see, he's made out of the block, like he's made out of concrete and bricks and asphalt and street stuff. Um, you know, so it, it, there's, there is a bit of a story, a little bit of a background to why he's made up of that and stuff. Um, and then here's page six and page seven. And I need to move on. I'm going to finish probably page eight today. Um, and we'll bring it back to the block because he looks cool. Um, so, yeah. So, um, yeah, as you can see, um, I'm calling those rough nails, not thumbnails, not roughs, they're rough nails. <laughs> so some of those rough nails I could actually draw from if I wanted to, I could like literally go and if I really wanted to, I could do finished things over a lot of that. Um, some of it, the characters aren't created, so they're just blobs. So I have to kind of I might create some of them on, on the page. There's one character, there's maybe two characters that are kind of important, especially that need good designs, but kind of the, the, um, the hecklers to expando, um, maybe not so important that they have super crazy designs. So I might design them right on the page. They're just like punks who are kind of razzing him. Um, so, uh, but they do come into the story a little bit. Um, I haven't written a script. Uh, I pretty much started right from the beginning. Um, and kind of, I had a, a very general story or, or kind of a way to start it in my mind. I was like, okay, he's going to be razzed by some punks or whatever. And then he's going to find himself in an old comic store. Uh, that is more like um, the, um, it's more like, it, it's like dusty and old and dark, you know, it's it's kind of like, um, what is the, the, the wand maker in, in Harry Potter, um, that, or I don't know if he makes the wands or if he just sells them, but um, it's kind of like that store um, where, where all the wands are stacked all over the place and and it's a mess, and it doesn't really look like a store you would, anyone would just go in, like, it looks more like a, a dusty old library that hasn't been taken care of type of thing, that's kind of what this comic store is going to look like, um, and there's going to be all kinds of stuff all over the place, and he's going to pick up this uh, symbol, the X symbol, whatever it is, he's going to pick it up and he's going to be like, what is this? And and then he's going to meet this old guy who's like the comic store owner, uh, who's kind of more like a, a um, you know, he, he's, he knows the lore of, of the world that they live in. And, um, you know, he, he's going to be interesting. Um, <laughs> And he's going to, he's going to encourage him to use, use the X, uh, and, and that's going to be something fun. So, um, that was kind of the idea at first. Um, and then as I was drawing and creating, I came up with another really cool idea that I'll save for the comic for you guys to read. Um, but, uh, you know, I'm really excited about this story. I think it's, um, it's fun. Um, and I'm kind of making it up as I go along, creating characters as I go along. I'm already close to page, I have, uh, page eight that I have to do. And then I'm expanding <laughs> my expando story to 10 pages because I feel like that gives me a little more room to put a little bit of fun action in there and, you know, really have some breathing room to show some cool imagery. Um, and I think... 10 pages will give me what I need to kind of 
finish it up and, um, you know, have kind of a to be continued scenario. Um, so yeah, I'm already getting there. Um, once I'm done with the roughs, I'll probably go on and I don't know. It'll probably be, be I don't know. It's not going to be like, you know, a straight up tight pencils and then inks, you know, layer necessarily. I'll probably kind of finish as I go. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but, um, you know, it's going to be an interesting process. Hopefully I can bump this stuff out super quick and then get back to Big Wrath because I'm really excited with the progress I was making on Big Wrath and also the other project I'm working on. Um, but that one, you know, <clears throat> there's only so much I can do with that project at the moment. So, you know, it's not, it's really not, um, super like, um, deadline-y, I guess. Um, but I do want to get that done. It's, it's important that that gets finished and out. Um, so, um, but it, I, it's all, it's, I guess the point is, is it's important that that gets finished and out, but it's kind of not in my control you know, really, whether it gets finished and out, so, um, you know, if more gets done, then I'll, I'll, um, I'll work on that, you know, because I really want to make sure that gets out as soon as it can, um, but that's not my project, so it's really not up to me, um, so, yeah, but the Big Wrath one is more up to me to a certain extent, at least my part, um, so, you know, I'm really excited to get that done, uh, at least the first um, five to eight pages, I think, uh, because then we'll send that out to Alterna. I'm not expecting to get picked up by Alterna, um, but I do want to at least see if I can get some feedback from Peter. Um, and who knows, maybe he will like it enough, you know, to to take it on. But if not, I'm totally cool with doing a um, crowd funder with that. And that's the one I'm working on with Peter Palmiati. And I'm excited to see what his inks look like over uh, my pencils. I think that'll be really cool. Um, and other than that, um, let's see, is there anything else? Uh, uh, yeah, check out um, the Comic Maker Toolkit by Scott Circlin. He, uh, I, like I said, I'm, I'm using the tools that he has in that um to make this i'm using clip studio paint i love clip studio paint on the ipad really cool um you know i noticed uh, I, I know that um peter seckler he does his comics in procreate and that's how he did that comic i showed you in the beginning this this salt um really cool um so you can even do that i saw um dan frega um of Fragaboom, if you've watched his YouTube channel, he's doing some really cool stuff. Um, but he also has that Black Flag comic he's working on, which he did back in the '90s in Image Comics. Um, and now he's revamping, which looks really cool. And I noticed that he's doing stuff in Procreate. Um, I personally really am more used to Clip Studio, Clip Studio Paint and the tools, and I'm just much more comfortable and can work quicker. Um, in Clip Studio, and I feel like there's a lot more tools available in Clip Studio, and also, um, you know, I can do the anti-aliasing ink lines, which you can't do um, in Procreate, not not in a real good way. Um, so, uh, you know, I want my lines to be nice and crisp, and um, so that's why I use uh, Clip Studio. Um, but you can still get really good results in, in Procreate. Um, it is a really fun and amazing program. So if you want to make comics in Procreate, go at it, you know, do your thing. Um, so that's cool. So, you know, I'm going to put a link in the description for um, the Comic Maker Toolkit by Scott Circland and for Isolt on Indiegogo um, by Peter Seckler. Definitely worth uh, checking both of those things out, I think. Um, and other than that, uh, thanks for watching and I'll talk to you on the next one. Peace out.